Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Shane. And Melody. And today we're coming from a little town we all know and love called... Big Stone Gap. Yes. And right now we're outside of the museum. We'll check that out here in a few minutes. Yes. And we'll take a look around. Such a cute little town. They have it decorated so pretty for Christmas. Absolutely. Yes. So we will waste no time to get on the road. What do you say? Let's go. So we just got off Hillbilly Highway? Yeah, that's what they call it. West 23. And off exit two, yeah, right? Dwight, yep, Dwight Yoakam mm -hmm. wrote a song about that. Really? Yeah. What was it? <laughs> Reading, writing, and Route 23 or something uh, like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Well, Dwight Yoakam isn't what it used to be. But <laughs> it's a good song. I don't remember it. How many times have you been to Big Song Gap? Oh. I guess I had been a couple of times in high school because of sports. Yeah. And then I've been over here probably four times or so since. Oh, yeah. So, not a lot, but enough to kind of know the lay of the land and a little bit of the history. So, I did read Well, I hope you book. going from Homeacre over here, I hope it wasn't for a football game. Because y'all yeah. probably got smoked like a yeah. cigarette. Then you well, we always played, uh, was that? Powell Valley, Powell Valley yeah. which was Appalachia though, right? No, Powell Valley was the Powell Valley Vikings down here at Bullet Park. Okay. And it's now Union. Yeah. Uh, back in the day they had Julius and Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. that's right. Yeah, yeah, they did. We usually would play them like in playoffs. Yeah, we did too. They beat Richlands back in those days. Well, they do now too. Yeah. They consolidated at school. Not they too did. often long ago. Appalachia and, and Big Stone, so that's why I kind of get them. I thought they blew. Down. I thought they blew a good opportunity, though. They're called Union, right? Right. You know, why wouldn't they call it like the Union Jack Rocks or the Strikers, or the Picket, too picket Line? Well, I guess the Bears. I mean, I like to. Back there was the turn off for Wallens Ridge, the prison. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we won't be spending any time up there. Well, I hope not. I'm more of a red onion guy. <laughs> it is a high level security prison. I know a lot of people that's work there, so it's a good provider of jobs at least. Oh, yeah. That area. But yeah, hopefully we won't see it. Yeah, several years ago they decided to plant a lot of those prisons down in this area for in, in all over southwest Virginia mm -hmm. because it's pretty remote, but it also yeah. give jobs opportunities to kind of replace coal, which has been dying for a long time. Yeah. So it really did make a big difference. A lot of people switched to yeah, a lot of people known of working in the prisons. That's a beautiful backdrop, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful Country. day. Is that one of those little bus stops for kids? I don't know. I hadn't seen those. I think it is. I'm not really sure. So, right. Big Stone Gap is in what county? Wise County. And the population estimate for Big Stone Gap in 2019 was 5,132. And it's stayed pretty steady throughout the decades, you know, unlike a lot of towns in the area. Yeah, and one part of the reason for that is those coal camps. You got Appalachia and all those from mm -hmm. Stomega that have moved a little bit closer this way for healthcare, school systems, and all that stuff. It makes it easier. Right. And I'm going to remember this for the first time in my life. See this green building right in front of us? Yes. It was a bus station. Okay, uh, I could see that. Last time like I the came layout through, of it. Yeah. Last time I yeah. came through there, I forgot. And I, I know it as well as I know my own name. And is that Huff Daddy Barbecue? I've heard a lot of good things about yeah. that. Check it out. It's closed right oh, now. Oh, it's closed. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll open up later. Yeah. But. Um, so, this community was once known as Mineral City and also Three Forks before it took the official name of Big Stone Gap in 1888. And Big Stone Gap refers to the valley created on the Appalachian Strait located between Big Stone Gap and the town of Appalachia. Okay. So, that's kind of how I got its name. Um, they once had hopes of Big Stone Gap to be the Pittsburgh of the South because of the coal and iron development in the town. It's funny you hear that about a lot of towns. They said about Bluefield. They actually yeah, said about Richlands. Yeah. None of them banned out for whatever reason. Yeah. It's Bluefield isn't like really, really south, but yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. That's true. So, I guess we're in a residential community right now. We are. More so. This is a residential community. 
I'm not really sure where Braley's Coach House is, but that's a pretty famous spot that I would like to see. Maybe some viewers could tell us exactly where that is, but that is the location that Elizabeth Taylor choked on the chicken bone when she was in town. <laughs> I remember and that, that happened. They actually featured that in the Adriana Trigiani book and movie. Um, it was kind of a whole ordeal. That's a big thing that Big Stone Gap is known for. So she was married to John W. Warner, who was running a campaign for Virginia Senate in 1978. And they stopped at Fraley's Coach House to meet with voters and eat kind of a meal with them. And she got the chicken bone lodged in her esophagus. So she was transported to Lonesome Pond Hospital where they were able to take care of her and then they made a generous donation as a thank you later on. Oh, so awesome. that was nice at least. I remember the picture of her getting yeah. carted out to the ambulance. Bless her heart. Yeah. She, yeah <laughs> Beautiful this, lady. Well the funny thing is she was supposed to go to my church the next day. <laughs> oh no. Or that weekend. And I guess she didn't make it. She didn't make it. She didn't make it. Well she did make it, but well. she didn't make it to <laughs> your church. Yeah. All right, so I think we're getting ourselves out of being lost now. You think I was lost? <laughs> yeah. Are you saying I was lost? Yeah, I was. Oh my gosh, it's giving that scenic. Uh -huh. You know, the areas you don't get to see every day when you go through Big Stone Gap. Like, right. It's going to be full. <laughs> and I want to give this people another shot of Glencoe Cemetery here. So. Yes, this is a beautiful cemetery. It really is. Yeah. And it looks like a little park over there. There's something called the Green Belt that goes through here too, a lot of people. The A.K. Fraley Park. Really? I wonder if they own Fraley's Coach House. I bet they did. <laughs> yeah. So, in 2014, this town was bustling because that is when they started shooting for the movie Big Stone Gap, which was a romantic comedy starring Ashley Judd. Um, totally blanked out there. Patrick Wilson. I gave you such a hard time for forgetting his name. I know, yeah. that's funny. I always... I know, and I love Patrick Wilson. Um, so, Adriani Trigiani wrote the book Big Sun Gap in the year 2000, 2014. They made a movie. Um, it was budgeted at $3.5 million, and she wrote four parts of the books. They didn't make any more movies beyond that first one, or not yet, anyways. Yeah. Um, also had Wolfie Goldberg in it, yeah. the fan. So, a lot of the locals kind of got to meet the actors. A lot of them they talked about were very friendly. They would come into the restaurants and eat. And Patrick Wilson's grandpa actually had a home here in Big Stone Gap. So, him and his brother were in the movie and they actually stayed at his grandpa's house. That's really cool. And back when that was going on, I, I guess to help promote the movie, but they started engaging with our Twitter account. Oh, okay, cool. So, I talked to Patrick Wilson. So, are you jealous? I am. Okay, yeah. I kind of threatened to stalk him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, casually. Nothing major. No, and people were always like, level. you can't do that. And so, okay. Ruin all the fun. But I love Patrick Wilson. He's in the Conjuring movies, which are some uh, of my that's favorites. Right. He's, yeah. He's, you haven't seen those, have you? It's all one. He, uh, yeah, he seems like a cool guy. Oh, okay. Can't yeah. So. Adriana Trigiani, and I probably butchered her name a minute ago. <laughs> it's just, you know, in the excitement. She I did, yeah. She moved to New York City after college, and she actually was a scriptwriter for The Cosby Show. So, she's done really well. She's wrote other books that have done well, and so she's really made a name for Big Stone Gap, and she's loyal to the town, it seems like, and... Was the big Stone Gap Visitor Center. Yes. And that was an old gas station? I think it was Carmine's. Okay, yeah, that's right. And she talked about that in the book. Good night, it's music. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Well, to the visitor center. Yeah, a little bit closer. Look, we saw it across the road, but it's such a they've done such much so much work on it. Yeah. That. And I think that that kind of started up after the movie, right? I think I read that they kind of started. Yeah. Revitalizing this building. I think that is right. the movie. That, that makes sense. Yeah. But they've done a great job. You can tell. Yes. 
Look at that Christmas tree. Love it. Hey, we're good. good. How are you? How about you? Hi, wife. Look how cute. You need to catch that, DJ. That's got a, a tie wind panel, like yeah. a mayor and town manager, stuff like that. Yeah. So I want to be one of my self ordained myself as a town jerk. <laughs> well, he's usually that tall. Right <laughs> Look here, Buck, town jerk dog. No. Oh, oh, how cute. He'll peek up over there. Well, you can afford to be a jerk if you got a big dog like that. Yeah, he's a big oh. chicken. Is. is he? Hey, that over there is Emily and Malia. They work here at the town also with me. We're, hey. stuck in, we're stuck in candy for the Christmas parade, which is Thursday night at 6 o'clock. Oh, okay. Awesome. A lot going on. We keep stuff going on here in town. In Big Strong. I know. I love that about this town because mm -hmm. a lot of places have just no. gave up. But yeah. Big Strong, yeah. yeah. No, they keep punching them. One thing I say, you know, I, I was raised here all yeah. except my four years of college. Yeah. yeah. And I want my grandchildren to be able to grow up here That's yes. and live here. A hey, good place you know, to grow up. It's a good place to live. Yeah. That's, That's one right. of the few places, and not just because on primary, they have brag on that people still say hi. Yeah. They're friendly, and you yeah. can jaywalk and not get a ticket. Right. Uh, <laughs> you can leave your doors unlocked. Well, I'll tell you what, I met the town jerk and he was pretty nice. So that's, you know, yeah. it's a pretty good town. <laughs> this is, and this right here is the center of the world. Yeah. I mean, all around the world, this right here, Big Stone Gap, is the center of the world. Well, I've come over here before, and it'd be snowing everywhere else, and be just dry here. It's just crazy. It's. Uh, Where are you guys from? I'm from Richlands originally, but I live in Bristol now. Oh, I'm okay. from Honeaker, but live in Abingdon. Honeaker. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and everybody's rich over in Richland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they must have missed me. He's from no. Dorian, I guess. Yeah, I know. I'm from Dorian, so it's a little different. Tell everybody you met Tim Jerry and. Visit the center of the world. We sure will. Thank you. <laughs> that was a fun little visit. Yeah. That was the nicest town jerk I've ever seen. I know. You can't beat that. <laughs> now we got to meet the town drunk, don't we? See what he's like. Yeah, Otis? Yeah. Where's Otis at? Hey, another look at the visitors here. Yes. Uh, it looks like Santa's going to be here December 18th. <laughs> Big news. <laughs> There's the Monitor Block building built in 1908. I'm guessing that was a bank, right? Uh, you got me, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Country kitchen here. Ready yeah. Gillies Jewelers. You don't see a lot of those in small towns anymore. No. Nope. Paul's TV. You definitely don't see a lot of those. The country kitchen has one of those little face things up you put your face in for a picture. I love those. And those Red Flower Chinese restaurant. No relation to Richland's Red Flower. Maybe not. Just Kirkland's. Yes. That's a restaurant. <clears throat> they got a nice little downtown area, don't you think? They do. They got a Hallmark store. I guess it's still open. Yeah, to be then it looks pretty new. Yeah. And here is the Slimp building, federal building. Which is the post, post office, office. Yeah. right? I think it was a Sea Bascom Slimp if I I always I think it. courthouse. It looks like a courthouse. It definitely does. It could have served us something else at some point. Yeah. Maybe. I and I love those uh, doors that go around and around. I feel like elf whenever I see those. <laughs> yeah. I like I want to run around in circles. I just watched that movie. A couple nights ago <laughs> for the 10th time. I love it. It's a nice little day to get out and walk around. Yeah. The very far I was at the sea by some slip. I did remember federal building, mm -hmm. post office. Hey. Mm. Be careful crossing the street. <laughs> yeah. During all traffic laws. <laughs> I don't want anybody like I get attacked for people those. get mad at you over oh, that stop sign especially yes. <laughs> I know rolling stops. it's a good thing I'm not driving because I'm really bad at do rolling stops that's the only time I've been pulled over really? <laughs> yeah well, I can't say that <laughs> well I could totally see both ways that's cute like these old vintage toys a little baby doll yeah. Santa Mrs. Claus of course I love these things when they're lit up. Yes. 
I like the elf run Rudolph. Run, run, Rudolph. Yeah. <laughs> Got lucky with the good weather to come out here, didn't we? Mm hmm. Christmas in the Gap. Now there is Mountain Empire Community College educating elves since 1972. Well, look at the pencils there on the side of the doors. Oh, that's so cute. Holton Hall, Godwin Hall, Rob Hall. Yeah. DC Hall, DC Hall. There's a big tree. I like the tree. I like the little snowman gingerbread. Yeah. You know, I love putting my face in those holes. What do you think? <laughs> Are you in the Christmas spirit? That helped. It definitely helped. <laughs> the stuff I dragged you into, right? You, know, you can't put your head in one of those and not be in a good mood, you know? <laughs> it's true. North Pole Visitor Center. The Elf, the Elf Lodge. Lodge. Up there's a Grinch. Oh my gosh. He's going to steal yeah. Christmas. On top of that. The toy shop, reindeer diner. All, all kinds of cute little setups here. I'm guessing that Santa probably makes an appearance down here on that sled too. Not really, yeah. Or the sleigh. It's like a sleigh? 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 And there's Buddy the Elf's Playhouse. <gasps> oh. You got some people playing on it. It looks, like. looks like some little elves playing. Yeah. This is a really neat little downtown section. I know it is. You know, the tree here. How do you like to put the star on top there? Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't do it on Hope the ladder, you're not right scared of heights. Uh, maybe on the back of a fire truck. <laughs> it's pretty neat. All right. So up here, we're about to hit Bullet Park, which is where the sports team plays, and then the Southwest Virginia Museum. Okay. This awesome. time of year is great because they have those Christmas tree displays in there. Yeah. Here's Bullet Park. I have to show that. Like I said, that's where Thomas and Julia Jones plays. They both played in the NFL for quite a bit. Okay. Both from Big Sun Gap? Yep. Okay. So, Thomas ended up playing for University of Virginia, and then he went to play for the Cardinals. He played for the Jets for a while. And Julius went to Notre Dame and played for the Cowboys. So, I mean, awesome. Teams, yeah. yeah, they've always been really good in football. Oh, yeah. As far as I've known, anyways. Yeah, there's some classic playoff games down here. Yeah. There's some really, really pretty holes through here, too. You come down here and not show Bullet Park. You gotta yeah. show it. I do remember. I, it was my senior year. We made it to playoffs, and we played them here. I'm having flashbacks from that. I haven't been here since. Really? <laughs> yeah. And we lost. But. <laughs> the last time I was here, Richlands was playing in the playoffs, and uh, James Mitchell scored and beat him. It was a really close game right at the end. So... It was probably around this time. I remember it was November because it had gotten cold. There's Pretty the cool. At the field where all the magic happened right there. Yeah. So. I mean, bears. Bears make sense. You said they could have used something else. I like Union, Jack Rocks. But... Union Jack Rocks. You know that's a catchy name. You saw a lot well, of t-shirts. It would be hard to find a mascot outfit for that. Yes. I've got a Jack yeah. Rocks deal. Did you know that? Yeah. You told me. Picket line would be cool too. Though. Yeah. The Union picket line. Can you imagine how cool? I mean, that sounds. Tough. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You don't mess with the Union. Well, I'm that's exactly right. Believe I talk about that all day. <laughs> you guys but for high around. school kids, you know, okay. they're still they're still in the team. Union they stick that. together. It's like teamwork. You know, Union sticks together. God, I mean, you got. <laughs> and we're gonna go by the June Oliver House at some point, right? Yes. Okay. And that is where they do uh, the Trail of the Lonesome Pond outdoor yeah. play. And that's actually the official outdoor drama of Virginia. And that was written by John Fox Jr., if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yes, who was also from Big Stone County. Yes. Very renowned author. Yes. And that, the play, it played a big part in the Big Stone Gap movie and book also. They kind of featured the storyline around that. 
there's also a coal museum, which is something I'm sure that you would love to see. I would have. Every time I came, it's been closed. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm all about the coal history. Yeah. But Harry Meter Jr. Yeah. Um, he made the coal museum, and he actually saved some of the items from when he worked in Westmoreland Coal Company. Which was a big operation around here, too. Yeah. A lot of coal history here. A lot of coal country, all these coal camps down toward Appalachia and that way, Stone Age and all that stuff. And they, you know, like I said earlier, those people migrate down here a lot just to be closer to healthcare, grocery stores. And they don't want to move too far from home, so Big Stone makes a perfect sense. And that's it's called Big Stone Gap, but almost everybody down here are here referred to as Big Stone. Yeah, I know. Most people do. Like... So here's the Southwest Virginia Museum here. Okay. They have the festival of trees going on right now for Christmas, and it is a sight to behold. Very pretty. Okay. Ooh, it's so pretty. It, it looks really like is. somewhere that would be decorated pretty for Christmas. Well, that's the thing. It's a like a small town built more. Yeah, exactly. I'll swear I was going to say that. Earlier. <laughs> that's a beautiful one. Oh my gosh, it's breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. This was somebody's home. It's actually yes. built in the 1880s by Virginia Attorney General Rufus Ayers. Mm -hmm. For $25,000. For $25,000. I'll pay him thirty dollars for this one. Yeah. <laughs> thirty-five. dollars It's amazing, though. So they have this festival of trees every year. And I think this year they've got in excess of 80, I think I heard 82, that they have. And it's a little bit competitive because people sponsor these for their businesses or civic organizations and that kind of thing. So throughout the house, there's 82 there will be 82 Christmas trees. That's a lot of trees. Yes. And very good things to them. The one back there was, of course, law enforcement um, support tree. And yeah. then it looked like a mental health tree or a veteran mental health tree. So yeah, neat. that's the thing. They don't just let anybody come in here. Pepsi, do them. You have to... see, it's not just Coke. Pepsi's really I'll be good done. and classic, too. I'll be done. And we're not <laughs> in North Pepsi Carolina, tree. even. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is over here. Oh, yeah, a Pepsi Nutcracker. How great is that? <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. So usually when it's a museum, you've got this coal mining history too, but it's kind of coming yeah. up right now. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great museum for that. We but, got we got to celebrate Christmas. Christmas oh, in yeah. Appalachia. That's a big old chunk of coal right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and fireplaces. Can you imagine what this was like when you could live here? Oh, um, I can't imagine. It feels like the Titanic here. <laughs> the Titanic. Yeah, yeah, those steps are like the fancy staircase. Well, let's hope this has a better ending than that then. So. <laughs> yeah. The Trail of the Lonesome Pond Tree. Yeah. But it is it? Yeah, it's a palm tree. Christmas tree is a palm tree, right? Usually. <laughs> Trail of the Lonesome Pond Tree. Yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> and there's Rufus Ayers, the person who built this house. So he was Attorney General okay. of Virginia. So. so it was his home. Okay. Yeah. Very beautiful. A quilter's tree. So that's a big part of Appalachia is quilting. So yeah. it's neat to see it on a tree. Absolutely is. <gasps> Ooh, pink. <gasps> Old stuff. 50s. <laughs> yeah. The 1950s tree. I love that. There's the that's Christian so flag there on that yeah. one. Yeah. Paws of Southwest Virginia. So. No. You look little like, kitties and doggies. You look like you're like a food this food dog. This is like dog. my little corner. <laughs> <laughs> Vintage little corner. and animals. Oh, there you go. Oh. Ooh, butterflies. The garden tree. Oh. Pretty. It's like the hats my mom used to wear on the top there. I just... Yeah, I like it. Mom's and Pond Auto Club. Home for Christmas. Homemaker. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can tell there's a lot of history with the tree, the house. Look at the oh, detail, yeah. the wood. Yeah, the ceiling like too, that. just amazing.
of these big old houses. Alright, well, we'll go back that way then. Oh, I love that house too. Green and red, it's like a Christmas house. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, and they got Christmas decorations. We got a tree house. I could live in that's nicer than where yeah. I live now, I believe. <laughs> so, some other notable people um, Miss America of 1993. Leanza Cornette, I know yeah. her well. Yeah. Um, I thought so. She passed away fairly recently, unfortunately. Yeah. But she yeah. was. When she won, she had a platform uh, speaking out in favor of AIDS uh, research. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it seems crazy now, but at the time that was pretty controversial. Yeah, and 93. She, didn't, she did not back down at all. She stayed with it. And, you know, she was a gritty gal. And I posted awesome. a picture on Twitter from here, and she yeah. commented on that. And we started talking. Yeah. And I was supposed to, I was going to interview her for another project I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I got Miss America's phone number. Oh, that's awesome. It took me a lot longer than I'd hoped in life to get her. <laughs> I had her phone number. So how many yeah. people can say, I have Miss America's? I remember you talking that you knew her and that she was really nice. She was, she was an awesome and person. And she was from Big Spring Gap, which yeah. she moved to Florida as a child, right? Yeah. So she, was, she probably won as Miss Florida, I guess. Yeah, and she was, but she always stayed very much in touch with the roots here. She yeah. was very appreciative of Big Spring Gap. She never, and she came back for a lot of events. I think she may have even performed in the Trail of Lonesome Pond. Oh, play for awesome. a couple of times. Yeah, she was just a great person. Everybody yeah. loved her. Yeah. Um, loved her. And, and that plays a away. big deal to people around here. Oh, yeah. It really is. is. Yeah, there's a lot of emotional attachment to it. Yeah. For good reason. It's great. I haven't got to see it yet, believe it or not. I haven't either. We need to make a point to do that. Absolutely. And so, you mentioned John Fox Jr., who wrote Trail of the Lonesome Pond, uh, Julius Jones. Yes. And. Thomas Jones, so I guess they were brothers. Yes. And also blues musician and singer Carl Martin and rockabilly musician Roy Hall, who was actually one of the writers of Jerry Lee Lewis's Whole Lot of Shaking going on. Really? He was from Big Stone Guy. Come over, baby, whole lot of shaking. I know I probably still like singing. Okay. <laughs> I love that song. I don't think you can get through one video without singing, could you? I can't. Singing, do it. Can I can't. I'm a reincarnated canary. <laughs> Now, the Tolliver House. Yay, right here we go. I'm trying to get a better shot. Yeah, and they have to have a good place out back to do the drama, right? Yeah. So. Nice little church thing. Let's see. A lot of historical buildings here in Big Stone. Pretty good shot of that because it's hard to see the little suns on it. but Yeah. Beautiful little house and a lot of attachment to this community. Yes. So this is the June Tolliver House, yes. which is not actually named for a real person. Did you know that? I did not. No. Well, I cheated and I looked it up. But yeah, it was named after a character in the Trail of the Lonesome Pine book, who was named June Tolliver, although the character she was based upon in real life did live here. Okay. So yeah. Awesome. And they actually have the Trail of the Lonesome Pine play back in the amphitheater behind here. So okay. kind of a neat little deal. But it's a very well-known landmark here in Big Stone Gap for sure. It is very well known. And a beautiful home. Yeah. And so it looks like down through here is where you go to go to the outdoor drama. Okay, I'll take your word for that. Let's look. We're definitely going to have to make it here for this sometime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard a lot of great things about it. For a, a local play, it's, it does it fantastic. Yes. And like we said, it is the official outdoor drama of Virginia. Yeah. So. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. Yeah. I love that. I know, me too. Well, let's get on down the road. What do you think? All right. Powell Valley Bank has in memory of Michael Chandler on the hood. And I think that we'd do a dishonor if we didn't come here and mention him. Um, so November 13th, it was actually his birthday. And Officer Chandler was responding to a wellness check call and he was actually shot and left in a ditch and it was just a horrific tragedy that affected everybody in southwest virginia it really really upset me he just seemed like such a nice guy um he later passed away at johnson city medical center after they did everything that they could um he was 29 years old that day and he was the last person to ever score a touchdown for Powell Valley Bike.
Vikings. Wow. So, um, he had a wife and daughter and a family that loved him, and it was just such a hard hit on everybody. I've seen very few things that rallied. I mean, from Roanoke all the way down here. Yeah. People, and even Governor Northam, you know, made a proclamation about it. It just yeah. affected a lot of people very well thought It out, did. So. Well, in these small communities, you know, it's kind of a lot like Mayberry, where you have some kind of connection to your police officers. Yeah. And just like, I'm from Russell County, the sheriff of Russell County, his wife was my English teacher and he went to school with my mom and he was a cousin to my uncle's wife and you just have connections to everybody in the town and so it really hit hard but he seemed like a great person and um, it's just just sad yeah, sad situation it, it brings out the best in other people but it's just a shame it happened yeah definitely so turn around up here we're heading if you keep on this road, you end up in Appalachia, which is the yes. only Appalachia in Appalachia or America, for that matter. So, mm -hmm. just a few miles down the road. And I ate at this pizza hut last time I was here, and I'll give it a thumbs up. It was good stuff. <laughs> the mountains in the backdrop look like a painting, don't they? Yeah, it really does. It's beautiful. And Pickstone is, you know, set really well in this, you know, where it is. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Whatever direction you look. <gasps> look at the old Coca-Cola mural. Oh, yeah. Me. I always love seeing those. Yeah, I like them. They repaint them like that. Even though I'm a Pepsi drinker. Are you really? Yeah, you know that. I know. I'm just trying to shame you. I will not be shamed. But Coca Cola is iconic, right? It's just classic. Right. Like apple pie, it's just American. So this is the Big Stone Gap Fire Department, and then here we go with another little shopping complex. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think there's a bakery on the end here that I've tried. Pretty true. There's a coal museum. I knew I was missing something. So. Yeah. Oh, well, that's really neat. It looks like it has like the wood siding. Yeah, and it's got all the equipment out in the front yard. And a sign up for Carl Martin, the musician. So they're closed today. Mm. We'll get to make it there again, but one maybe of these one days. Day. One of these days. Could I know you're reason. dying to see it. I love that stuff. I collect a little coal mining yeah. memorabilia. I've got a fortune of that stuff. These houses back there here are beautiful. They are. I love them. There's Cherokee Avenue and Shawnee representing two of the tribes. There's a carousel house. Yeah. Not really sure what that is. Maybe a bed and breakfast or something. Good question. I'm sure somebody will tell us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, that's a wrap on Big Stone Gap. I enjoyed my trip here, didn't you? I did. It was a nice little look at the town, all their pretty Christmas decorations. We thought that we would do our outro here at this sign. Thank you, first responders. The holding funeral home actually put that up. I'm guessing in honor of Michael Chandler, and we just wanted to say again how um, sorry that we were to the town for the loss of that amazing officer and his sacrifice. So. I know we mentioned the video. I want to mention it again because yes. it just left it a real a impression, impression on us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a big loss on us. Absolutely. We'll make mention of that. Yes. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, then subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our amazing area towns. Give us a thumbs up, comment, share it. You know the drill. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on down the road.